there that she was found severed into in the vacant lot, though. And a little knowledge nugget right here. Uh, by June of 1947, police had processed and ruled out a list of 75 suspects. By December of 1948, the detectives had considered 192 suspects in total. Of those, about 60 of them had confessed to the murder. Jesus. Right. This was due to a $100,000 reward that was posted. Now, only 22 people were considered viable suspects by the L.A. district attorney, but authorities have been unable to identify the actual murderer. So it's still unsolved. And that's the first notable person who has a connection to the Cecil Hotel. But, of course, we have more. But before we get into it, uh, I just want to say we do have an image posted up of a, what is this, a newspaper clipping? It was, I guess, something like that. I guess the mirror was like some uh, newspaper or magazine or something. Yeah, mirror offers reward of $100,000. Someone knows who killed her. It was a picture of uh, Elizabeth Short. So It was weird, though, because the, some of the people that actually tried to confess to the murder actually like brought in like evidence that belonged to her. So it's like, yeah, I murdered her. This used to belong to her. So they were like bringing in items that belonged to her. So maybe they did that on purpose to kind of sabotage. Possibly. I mean, shoot, if they were offering a reward, a lot of these people were turning in fucking relatives to try to get the reward. It's like, hey, I fucking hate my brother over here. He murdered her. Can I get the reward? It's kind of messed up. Yeah, it is messed up. All right, so what's this next notable person? Hoo-hoo. Oh, oh. Ha. In the mid-1980s, Los Angeles witnessed a frenzied serial killer. His modus operandi was that he would break into people's houses, steal some shit, and then end up killing them if they were there. Same as everybody else's who's a murderer. Yep. Do y'all know what this man's name was? Well, I'll tell you. This man was Richard Ramirez, a.k.a. the Night Stalker. Yeah, so we have a picture of the Night Stalker and Court holding up his hand with a pentagram. And doesn't he say, like, Hell Satan or something? Yeah, like, in the middle of court, like, he just, like, Hell Satan! Yeah, we're going to dive deep into him uh, on, on our other podcast, of course. But that's going to be later on, so. He looks like a rat. He looks like a uh, Splinter. What yeah, is, that, is that his name on Ninja Turtles? Master oh. Splinter? Splinter. Yeah, Master Splinter. Ninja Turtles. Is that the rat? Yeah. The bad guy was Shredder. Yeah, he looks like Splinter, man. Look at him. Him and Splinter look exactly alike. I heard, like, he had an outburst in court, and, like, the bailiffs took him in the hallway and just started beating the fuck out of him. Like, boots, kicking the shit out of him. Because he, like, I think he made, like, a comment about one of their families that if he got free, he'd kill him. And so, like, the bailiffs, like, took him out and just started beating him in the fucking hallway. Jesus Christ. I don't know. I mean, if... You said if you were a fucking serial killer and then you talking about if he got free. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's this. That's the picture of Splinter that I found. What do you guys think of that? Oh, yeah. They got the same eyes. Yeah, they do. Beady little bastards. Dude, that picture just makes his eyes look so fucking evil. Like has no care in the world. Yeah. All right. Historians of the Cecil Hotel will tell you that the Richard Ramirez was very fond of staying there because it was extremely cheap. Now, it isn't confirmed that Ramirez didn't commit any murders at the hotel during this time, but there is an interview from the documentary The Vanishing where they interviewed a man named Kenneth Given who stayed at the hotel during the 80s, and this is what he had to say. Back in the 80s, I would never go no farther than the sixth floor. Usually the higher floors in Cecil, people would get killed up in there. Once they would get a guy up in there, they would rob him, beat him, and would throw him out of the window. So if you didn't watch yourself, you might fly out of there with no wings. Now, one L.A. historian claims that many times during Ramirez's killing sprees, he would be seen stripping out of his blood-covered clothes in the back alley behind the hotel and get down into his underwear before entering the hotel through a back entrance, which he was still covered in, like, blood. But, you know, yet... To the people staying at the hotel, Ramirez looked like another person from the street looking for a cheap place to stay for the night. Hmm. Well, it's confirmed that he stayed there. Mm-hmm. 
but unconfirmed if he actually murdered anybody in there or if he actually came there after he murdered people, which yeah. I suspect he did. But Oh, yeah, you know. dude. Like, who, what are the police going to do? All he's got to do is, like, distract him, just throw somebody out the window. Oh, God, it's another fucking suicide. God damn it. So don't we have, like, another serial killer or something like that? Yes, we do. Now, Richard wasn't the only killer to have stayed up there at the Cecil. Guess what? Here we come. Doubleheader for you. So, Johann Jack Untervega was an Austrian who was convicted of killing a woman by strangling her with her own bra. He was convicted and sentenced to life in prison in Austria. In 1990, Untervega was actually pardoned of his crime because Austria believed he was a reformed man and was released from prison. Oh my God. Unta Vega then decided to come to America in 1991 as a journalist for Austria 